please join me in welcoming David Meerman Scott. I love, I love the idea of viral marketing, how one thing can spread on, online from one person to another person to another person. The truth is everybody can create something interesting that has the potential for people to spread it and for the potential to reach literally millions of people. Oh, but David, I'm a to I market toilets. What in the world can I do? If you understand your buyer personas, you understand what you want them to believe, you can create interesting content. Here's what CWS Toilets did to market their product. Say no to dirt. <laughs> and that's been seen by a million people. And I present keynote speeches, I do seminars, I'm on webinars. I speak in front of about 20,000 people a year. The keynote speeches and the all day seminars are a combination of three things education, entertainment, and motivation. Uh, did that one, you want to do that one once more? Education, entertainment, and motivation. And I provide those three things because I don't want my speeches and my keynotes and my all-day seminars to be boring. The last thing I want you to be doing is playing Blackberry while I'm talking. I want you to be interested. I want you to be able to use the information that we're talking about. I want these to be fun. On the web, you are what you publish. Literally, you are what you publish. If I go into, onto Google, I type in your brand name or your product name, whatever I get is you online. Here's the thing, event planners, meeting planners, trade show people, you can no longer count on your target audience automatically attending your events. You also can't count on the gimmicks that we've often used. Some of these things are fine, I suppose, in an offline world, but gimmicks don't work so well in an online world. You know, 10% off. As much as I like bikinis, I'm not gonna buy one because there's they're 10% off. Um, here's something else that comes up a lot, this sort of bait and switch kind of things. This is not a joke. You are the 10,000th visitor. Warning, we have trapped you on this site. You are officially screwed. Um, what is it with free iPods? Um, everywhere and in, in the online world, I see free iPods. It's amazing. Did you know that there are something like 20 sites online that you can go to that tell you what marketers are giving away free iPods? Do you think these are people who are interested in your products and services? Or do you think they're people who are interested in free iPods? Here's one free iPod site. Here's freeipodguide.com. Here's myfreeipod.com. The point is, the offline things to drive people to the booth, like you see this, this wonderful go get your free uh, iPhone 3G, that's great when you've got everyone in this room, everyone who's a potential buyer of a product. But uh, online, it's really not a good idea because all you're getting are people who want that offer and they're not necessarily interested in what you're offering. Those of you who are doing white papers, how many of you have a gate on it that says, sorry, you can't read my valuable white paper unless you give me your email address? To me, that's insane. You have the potential of having your ideas spread from one person to another. You have the potential that people will blog about your stuff, and yet you put a gate on it because you're measuring based on how many people give you an email address. I have evidence that when you have an email address versus when you don't, the ratio is 20, between 20 to 1 and 50 to 1 of the number of people who will download it. Um, this this uh, ebook in the front, The New Worlds of PR, which I put out, uh, well over a quarter of a million people. Here's what an ebook is from my perspective. This particular one was done by Dow Jones. It's landscape orientation, so it fits really nicely on a screen as opposed to, to portrait orientation like a typical white paper. It's colorful, it's interesting, it has fun graphics. It's totally 
free, I recommend putting what's called a Creative Commons license on it, which allows people to share it. It's light and it's breezy and it's fun and people want to share it and you offer it through an ebook landing page. These things have potential, if they're done well, to spread like crazy. One person sending it to another, sending it to another, sending it to another, as opposed to most of the times that we create this kind of content when it just sits there with a gate on it and, oh my God, we got someone who downloaded it today. Well, that's great, but if you'd made it totally free, you might have gotten a thousand people to download it today. I don't know who else is staying across the way over at the Marriott, but every time I go to a hotel, I always check out the hotel's website. And hotel websites are all the same, aren't they? What do they talk about? They talk about the product. What's the product at a hotel? Fluffy pillows, tasty shrimp, and they're near the city center. Yeah, they're all the same, aren't they? Now, can you imagine how different a hotel website would be if instead of talking about their product, which is fluffy pillows and tasty shrimp, they talked about who their buyer personas are. They understood them and understood the market problems of each buyer persona. For example, there's the independent business traveler who makes a decision of what hotel to stay at by themselves. And they might want to have free parking, they might want to have internet connections, whatever. Then there's the trade show organizer, the conference organizer, the event organizer. What are they looking for? They, they perhaps want to get the best rate. Um, they want to make sure that they can get everybody into the facility. They don't have to go like 80 blocks down the way at the Motel 6. These are the sorts of things that are important to that buyer persona. How about the company that has a headquarters down the street from the hotel? They want to have the corporate travel department, right, is the buyer persona, wants to perhaps have centralized billing. You've got a young couple maybe who wants to get married in the hotel ballroom. You've got a family perhaps going on vacation um, that wants a hotel room as well. Each one of those buyer personas is different, aren't they? Now imagine how much more interesting their marketing would be, their website would be, if they didn't talk about fluffy pillows and tasty shrimp, but instead talked about the problems that each one of those buyer personas had. And they published content that reached those buyer personas directly. Getting away from talking about your products and services for many marketers is really, really hard. It's really, really hard not to talk about your products and services. Here's one thing to think about for how to do that. Don't talk about your products and services. Instead, talk about what you want your buyer personas to believe about your organization. What do you want your buyer personas to believe about your organization? Gatorade improves athletic performance is an example. Here's another example. One word. What does Volvo want their buyer personas to believe? Good, everyone gets that one. Here's the next one I'm gonna show. This is really interesting. Also one word. I've asked this question all over the world. I asked this question um, three weeks ago. I was in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia delivering a presentation. I asked the same question. 100% of the people said the same word. What does Barack Obama want his buyer personas to believe? Amazing change and everybody around the world knows that. What do you want your buyer personas to believe about your organization? Guess what? It's not what does your product do. The point, please speak to your buyer personas in their language, not in your language.